Hey everyone, welcome to Beach Investing. I'm your host, Andre Jolkovsky. We're here outside a typical three bedroom house that's approximately 2,000 square feet in size, including the basement. And we're going to be providing you with electrical lessons with Hamid. How are you, Hamid? Hi, good. So, Hamid is a master electrician with HRM Electrical. And we're going to walk you through this house and provide you with some electrical lessons. So, starting off with this. This is what, the service panel? Yes, so this is a meter. This is a 200 amp meter. We just installed it for Andre. And as you see, this is the size of the conduit, is um, 2 inch PVC. And um, I just want to show you what was the existing service. The existing service for this house used to be like this. That's what, it look, that's what it used to look like? Yes. And that's what, 100, 100 amp? That is 100 amp. And as you can see, there's no meter outside for this house. Okay. So the meter used to be inside this um, room, in the, inside the basement. Okay. So what we did for this house, we offered the service to 200 amp and we installed the meter for the outside. That's the requirement from Toronto Hydro. That the meter has to be outside the house. And obviously the size of the conduit, as you can see, is much bigger than that. Yep. This is 2 inch, you can see that's inch and quarter. So that's how you can tell 100 amp versus, sorry, 200 amp versus 100 amp. Exactly, yes. The 200 amp service means the 2 inch PVC conduit. Okay. And the size of the cables, as you can see, is much bigger than the 100 amp cables. All right, so... One more thing that the uh, meter is supposed to be close to the front of the house, not more than one meter from the edge of the house. So we are limited to install the meter in this space here. That's uh, the new code, eh? That's the new code. And then we run the conduit all the way to the, where the electrical panel is. Okay. If you want, we can go inside the house and can see the electrical panel. Let's do it. All right. So we're back here now. We're at the electrical panel. So Hamid. How do we know when we look at this electrical panel whether it's a 60 amp, a, two, a 100, or a 200 amp? Well, um, there is a number on the main breaker on the every panel. As you can see, there is a number 200 on this one. So it says that this panel is 200 amp. Okay, so there's something that actually shows that it says 200 on it, right? That's right, yes. Even if it was a 60 amp, would it say 60 amp? Yes, definitely. And one more thing that you can check the size of the service is the size of the while that entering the panel, for 200 amp it has to be 2 inch, and for 100 amp it's supposed to be inch and quarter, and for 60 amp it's usually 1 inch. So two things can determine the size of the panel, is the number of the main breaker and the size of the component. Okay, and um, approximate cost mm -hmm. uh, to upgrade from a 60 amp to a 100, and then from a 100 to a 200. Yeah, it all depends on the situation. Okay. It depends on the location of the panel in the house and depends on the location of the hydro wires. But as a reference, I can tell that uh, operating from 60 to 100, it's a ballpark between 1,000 to 1,500 dollars. So from a 60 to a 100? Yes. Anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500? Yeah, it depends okay. on the location. Yeah, yeah. And, and from, a, from 100 to 2? From 100 to 200 amp, usually any number between 1800 to 2500 dollars. 1800 to 2500, okay. And uh, what about changing it from a fuse fuse panel to a breaker panel? Yeah, in some cases, uh, houses has a good service, like 100 amp service or 200 amp service, but the panel is no good and it's uh, old fuse panels. In that case, uh, operating from fuse panel to the Breaker panels, uh, again, it's uh, for the 100 amp, I can tell uh, ballpark about uh, seven, eight hundred dollars Okay. for 200 dollar, uh, for, excuse me, for 200 amps, it's uh, ballpark between 800 dollars, 1200 dollars, okay. something like that. And does the size of the, of the panel matter? Yes, um, the number of the breakers are... Yeah, sorry, number of breakers, right? Yeah. Okay. The, this is a 200 amp panel. This has 40 breakers, but you can find 200 amp panels with less breakers. But in this house, uh, we used 40 breakers because we needed, if this is uh, two units, we needed this much breakers. Okay. 
And same thing for the 100 amps. We can find the panels with different number of the breakers. For the 100 amp, we have panels with 24 circuits or 32 circuits, or more or less. I guess it also depends on how many stoves you have, how many um, exactly. washer and dryers you have. Because we, we uh, deal with a lot with investors. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to investors looking for a duplex or a triplex, does, yes. does it matter what kind of panel you want? Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, when you have two residential units in a house, and mm -hmm. if you have two stoves, two dryers, you definitely need a 200 amp service. You cannot get away with 100 amp service for the two residential two residentials. Yeah. Uh, there are some exceptions if the residential unit has one stove and using one gas stove, or they are sharing a dryer. They might be there might be a possibility using 100 amp service. Okay. But uh, for the houses like this that we have two stoves, two dryers, and then two different uh, residential units, definitely we need one amp service. Okay, is, is, there, um, is there a way that we can find out if there's wiring that looks like knob and tube or aluminum or copper um, just by looking at the panel? Uh, you see if the, all the wires are coming to the panel, they are good wires. Because you don't see any old knob and tube wire <coughs> entering the panel. So that's something you should be looking at. But I don't know if the camera can catch this. There are some trace of old wiring in here. See that black wire? You see that black wire? Okay, that's that's not. That's an O and two open, which is not used, uh, which is not connected to anything in this house. But it is kind of wiring that um, you should be looking for in the, uh, when you are purchasing a property. Okay. So let's let's move on to um, the uh, the outlet, and we'll, we'll we'll show the viewers a little yeah. lesson about the outlet. So now we're going to talk to you about GFCIs, why they're needed and their importance. So Hamid, show us. Okay, GFCI. It's a short form for ground fault circuit interrupter. Okay. Means that um, the, there's a protective device when you are close by to the any source of water, and uh, there's a little tester here that we can test that it's working properly. You can plug it in. You see the two lights? You see the two lights there? And if you push this button here, it has to be tripped. It has to trip the um, GFCI circuits. And then you can reset it again by pushing this one. Okay, what it does, um, when you are using the water and you are using the Electrical devices like hair dryer. So blowing my hair, like drying my hair. Yeah, electrical uh, or shaver, whatever it is. Okay. Uh, you, there's a chance that you might get um, electrocuted because water is very low resistance material. So uh, they come with a solution for that. They invented this GFCI devices. What it does, if it, there's a little tester inside that device, and then you are in contact with the elect electricity. If there is any leakage in electricity out of the wires, it will shut off the circuit and it will protect you. So basically you're safe. In case I'm blow drying my hair, the hair that I have left, that's right. I turn on the water, <laughs> and then if I touch it, yeah. that's... If there is any chance of electrocution, this device will shut it off okay. and it will protect you. That's the whole purpose of GFCI circuits. All right. Okay? Okay, so... Uh, Let's go see the uh, other uh, grounding. On the grounding. Okay. All right. So now we're here. We're going to be testing outlets to determine whether they're grounded or not. Now, when you're walking through a house, there's a little device that Hamid has here, and uh, you can pick up one of these uh, Canadian Tire. Maybe yes, Home Depot Canadian Tire. Yeah. How much are they? Ten dollars? Fifteen bucks. Fifteen dollars? No. Okay. So these things test whether an outlet is grounded or not. Yeah, uh, different things. It uh, tests that if the outlet is grounded. If the polarity of the, of the outlet is correct or reverse, this is very important. And if the neutral is present or not. Okay. So this uh, tester has different options. If I don't know if camera can take this. The normal, the, so if you plug in, you're going to see multiple lights. Uh, it has three sets of lights. So if you plug in, you want to see that two two lights on the right side are on 
that's a normal situation which uh, receptacle is working fine. If you see on any other order of the lights, it will tell you um, that uh, what's the problem with the outlet. Okay. So let's test this one. Yeah, as I said, two, two lights on the right side is one. If you see the, the, there's a quote here that this outlet is grounded and it's good. Okay, so now, now that it's grounded, that's, it's safe, is that correct? It is safe, yes. And um, most people ask what's the ground and what does it mean, or what's, what's, what's so important for the outlets. The ground provides a safe path from the outlets to the electrical box. Safe path meaning that if there's anything happen that the live wire attaches the appliances, say if you have a fridge here, you plug the fridge in here, if there is no ground present, there is a possibility, there is a chance that the live wire touches the body of the fridge. If there is no ground present, it's a very dangerous situation. And any kids, any person can touch the body of the fridge and get electrocuted. Oh wow. Yes, but the ground, the ground provides a safe path from the body of the fridge to the electrical box, and from the electrical box it goes to the ground. So if that happens, they can, and then the electricity won't stay on the body of the appliances, and it will return to the panel and it will cause the breaker to trip, to trip the breakers. Okay. So it's provided very good safety for the people that it's working with the appliances. Okay. Thank you for that lesson. No problem. Um, I want to I want to talk to you about rewiring an entire house. Mm -hmm. So this is a typical, like we said, a three bedroom house, approximately 2,000 square feet, including the basement. Yeah. What is the typical cost to rewire a house of this size? Well, as you know, every house is different. You know? yeah. uh, every house is different structure, different kind of wall, walls and insulations. Uh, but as I can say a ballpark for rewiring it, Three bedrooms, three story house like this. Yep. This is a semi detached, right? Yep, semi detached. Yep. Yeah, you can you can expect that the rewiring of this house again depends how many percent of wiring are old and no one two. Right. Assuming that you have hundred percent no one two, yep. you are expecting to have the cost of like between six thousand to eight thousand dollars to rewiring of the Okay, six, house. so six to eight thousand dollars to rewire everything. That's right. That does not include patching up holes like this. No. Right? No. That's the responsibility. That's, that's extra charge. That's extra charge and there are trade people that can take care of that. See okay. like we, we made a couple of holes on this here. Yeah. So holes. like that for example. Uh, this was the old pot light. Okay. And that doesn't include the service upgrade. If there's any requirement for service upgrade, that's additional charge. Okay, so we talked about that in, the, in there, so it can be ranging anywhere from 1000 to 2500 depending on That's what right. kind of service upgrade you're doing. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now you're walking through a house. What are some things that you want to tell our viewers to watch out for in terms of safety hazards? You're walking through a house, you want to buy a house. And what should we be looking out for? What should we, what should we say when we see something that's dangerous? Well, as you said, safety is the number one priority for everybody. When you are walking through the house, you should see that um, you should look for the dangerous things for electrical, uh, something like live wires hanging out of the walls. Like this? Uh, no, I would say something like this. There's not a lot of uh, exposed wires are not a lot. Uh, of course, this is temporary. Yeah, yeah. This is under construction. <laughs> But you shouldn't see something like that sticking out of the wall, and you shouldn't see any junction marks without color. Okay. You shouldn't see any any device without color plate. Color plates are very important. At the middle of the night, you might come and look for a switch. You might stick your finger inside the switch and get electrocuted. Mm, okay. So color plates are very important to have all the color plates unbroken and safe and not having any exposed electrical wire through the walls. Okay. That's something you should look for. All right.
Thank you so much. My pleasure. It was a very big pleasure to have you and give us nice electrical lessons. No problem. And I'll put your contact information uh, below and uh, if someone has any questions, they can contact you sure. if you work and stuff. Yes, definitely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks, guys.